ASMR gaming news, please hit that like button, sit back, relax, and let's begin. So, the PlayStation 5 event happened this week. It's the biggest piece of news of the week, so we're going to talk a lot about the PlayStation 5. Uh, wow, it was finally revealed, so I guess I'll talk about the PlayStation 5 reveal first, and then we can talk about the games that were announced. So, this right here is a picture of the PlayStation 5. Uh, the system looks extremely futuristic, you know, in movies or cartoons when they show, like, the future, and then they show, like, a video game system of the future. That's what the PlayStation 5 looks like. It has, like, a wing kind of, like, on the side that, like, slopes and everything. It looks weird, but also kind of cool. It looks futuristic. It's all, like, white. The outer shell is, like, white. Uh, that's gonna look amazing, you know, like, next to your TV or something. It looks like console of the future, so I like the color, I like the design, it's very different from what I was expecting. Um, the PlayStation 4 kind of looked, you know, futuristic when it came out, and I think the PS5 is trying to be like the PS4, like, sleek, cool, modern design. I like it, I like it. There are going to be two versions of the PlayStation 5, so there is going to be a digital-only version, yes, a version without a disc slot, so no way to play discs, so no Blu-rays. Uh, we don't know what this means exactly, if it will be cheaper or not. I assume that the digital-only version could possibly be like $50 less, even maybe $100 less than the version with the disc. Uh, you know, Sony could make something like uh, the disc version of the PS5 could come with like a one terabyte SSD and maybe they'll sell that for a slightly higher price than the version without a disc slot. That's maybe 500 gigabytes SSD. You know, you never know. They might sell a lower spec version with no disc slot. So more people can buy that version if they don't have enough to get the version with the disc. But at the same time, they have all the same power and the ability to play all the same games, so pretty smart for Sony to offer two different, you know, versions right at launch. Uh, there is no official release date. All we know is 2020, so later this year, but they did not give an official release date, like in October or November, and they did not give us a price yet. Now, there is a rumor that came out this week that the PlayStation 5 is going to be $599, but that was disproven. Nothing was announced, so we don't know how much the PlayStation 5 is going to cost. Everyone right now is just guessing, and there was a leak on Amazon in the UK, like I said, but Amazon's not really trustworthy when they leak prices for things, because they will just put a placeholder price and not the definitive final price for something, so we just have to wait and see what the price is going to be. Um, features of the PS5, apparently it's going to have incredibly fast SSD technology. Uh, there's going to be like a 3D audio technology that's unlike anything else on a video game system up to date. So it's going to have proprietary Sony 3D audio for games that sound more immersive. Uh, the PlayStation 5 is going to come with a 4K Blu-ray disc reader, so you'll be able to play your 4K Blu-rays on the PlayStation 5. So, hey, let's say you got, I don't know, Star Wars or the Avengers Endgame on Blu-ray on in 4K, you'll be able to play that on your PlayStation 5. So, uh, that's awesome. A 4K Blu-ray and games, of course, are going to be on bigger Blu-rays than they were on the PS3 or PS4, because, you know, they take up more space now. So, it makes sense. 
um, they talked a little bit about the controller. The controller analog sticks are going to be uh, a little bit more responsive. The triggers, the L2, R2 triggers on the controller are going to have adaptive touch. So they're going to be a little bit more sensitive to pressure and stuff like that. Uh, PS5 controller is going to have a built-in speaker, uh, built-in microphone, and of course a headphone jack and stuff like that. Awesome, amazing. Also, it's very ergonomic. Uh, ergonomic, it like fits your hand. Uh, it's going to be very comfortable to use for long gaming sessions. Uh, the color, the white on the controller matches the white of the console. Uh, we don't know if there's going to be another version or color uh, at launch, but so far we only know there's going to be the one color uh, style that you can choose from. So maybe they'll release like a black version, a red one, a blue one later down the line like they usually do, you know, special editions and all that. But uh, yeah, then on the PlayStation 5 itself, they didn't really show all of the ports, especially on the back, but on the front, there seems to be um, a power and eject button, or reset button, so, you know, a uh, button that seems to be like uh, the original PlayStation 4, where you didn't even need to press a button, you just held your finger in front of the system, and it kind of like sensed your touch, and would turn on later versions of the PS4 actually had a button that you had to press, but not the original one. Uh, it seems like the PS5 has like a power on or eject and reset button like this on the front. Uh, there seems to be a USB 3.0 port or 3.1 port. It's going to be latest USB uh, technology definitely. And there is a USB-C port as well on the front. At least it looks like USB-C. So I don't know what kind of uh, cable the PlayStation 5 controller is going to use to be recharged, but I'm assuming it could possibly be USB-C, which will make it a lot easier, but it may be USB, so we don't know yet. Uh, wow, the system looks amazing and going to have fantastic graphics. Uh, all the games they showed during this live stream event, over I think like 2 million people were watching the live stream live on YouTube. And that doesn't even count Twitter or Twitch and Mixer and Instagram and all these other places. People were all tuning in to watch this event, so it's crazy. So, Sony basically showed all of these games and trailers for new PlayStation 5 games, and they were all running on the PS5 in-engine. So these were not like CG trailers with no gameplay, apparently. They were actually shot from the in-game engine on PS5. So let me just say, the PlayStation 5 is powerful. I was, my mind was completely blown uh, by some of these games, like the special effects, particle effects, it, everything was so detailed. I was like, what in the world? Wow, like, this is going to be great. So, uh, the event started. I'm going to go through the biggest games. You know, a lot of games were shown. Uh, I have, all I have to say is, whoa, Nintendo and Xbox, you guys need to show some games because Sony just killed it with the games. Like, they showed game after game after game. And every single game looked really good. Uh, there were a few that seemed a little bit boring, kind of, uh, not the greatest. They, they seemed okay, though, but most of them looked really, really good, so I'm excited for, like, so many of these games, so. Uh, they started off with the Grand Theft Auto trailer, which was GTA V. At first, I was like, wait, GTA VI, but no, everyone got trolled. It's GTA V, but it's going to be a special enhanced and expanded version of GTA 5 exclusive for the PlayStation 5 coming out in 2021. Uh, so apparently this is going to have like an expansion, more story content, more online content, better graphics, better uh, textures, FPS probably, all that stuff. So GTA 5, if you're a fan, PS5 is going to get an even better version of that game with more content. And additionally, Rockstar announced that GTA Online is going to be free to all PlayStation Plus subscribers, and they also said that every single PS4 owner right now 
every single month leading up to the launch of Grand Theft Auto 5 for PS5, they are going to get like 1 million credits or whatever the online currency is for GTA 5. Every single month they're going to get that for free as long as they're, you know, PS4, PlayStation Plus subscribers. So that's insane. Uh, next, they showed off Spider-Man. Uh, Spider-Man, it's called Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales. So Miles Morales, if you watch Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, was it Enter the Spider-Verse or Into the Spider-Verse? I forget. Either way, you know who Miles Morales is. Uh, it's a new Spider-Man game and it's coming out this holiday season. Yes, holiday 2020. So I'm very excited for that. That looks great. The original Spider-Man game on PS4 did great when that came out. This looks even better, so I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. Uh, they announced Gran Turismo 7. So yes, new Gran Turismo game coming out for the PlayStation 5. All of these are PS5 games. I don't even need to say it, but if you like car simulation games, if you like car racing, Gran Turismo is one of the best up there with Forza and Gran Turismo 7 got announced for PlayStation 5, and it's going to have a lot of traditional content from the original Gran Turismo games, like a campaign, so fans are going to be very, very happy about that. Next, they announced Ratchet and Clank, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, and this game has some of the best graphics I have seen in a long time for a PlayStation system, like on PS5. The particle effects, the graphics, everything. The fur on, like, Ratchet on looked amazing. There was, like, water puddles and rain and all sorts of things exploding. Everything looked amazing. And the game looked like a lot of fun. So if you're a Ratchet and Clank fan, that's coming out on PS5. It looks amazing. Uh, next, Square Enix showed off a new game, and I got really excited because I was like, is this going to be a new Final Fantasy what is this? And then they announced it's a game called Project Athia or Athia. Uh, <laughs> it looks really nice. There were like dragons and it was set in like a fantasy world and there's this girl walking around and then it just ends. So it's a very mysterious trailer. I have no idea what was going on, but I'm interested. I'm interested. Uh, next, there was this weird uh, cat game called Stray. And it looked kind of nice, uh, simple, but nice. Not much, like, <laughs> was shown. All we know is that you're a cat walking around, and there seems to be things going on and mystery or something. I don't know. It looked cool, so I'll definitely be checking out Stray. That's coming out next year. Most of the games are either coming out at the end of this year or next year that were shown at this event, so... You know, we're, we're going to be getting all this stuff within the next year at least, so that's good. Uh, let's see, what else? Next, they showed this game that looks so scary. It was called Returnal. The music was scary and very ominous. At first I was like, oh, this is a cool sci-fi game. And then it got kind of dark. Uh, if any of you watched the movie Groundhog Day or... Basically, movies where the same day repeats itself over and over and over again. That's what this game is. You're basically like this astronaut crash landing on an alien planet, dying, and then reliving that same scenario over and over and over. And apparently, certain things start changing. This planet that you land on starts changing. You have to change the course so you don't die and you survive and explore, and it looks very horror-inspired, almost like Lovecraftian in certain parts. It looked very creepy. The music also creeped me out. Uh, the game is called Returnal, and that's a really good name, because, you know, return and eternal, and they merge that into one word. So, kind of cool. The game looks interesting, but also kind of scary. Uh, they announced a new, uh, not Little Big Planet game, but a game called Sackboy, a big adventure. So, hey, if you like Sackboy from Little Big Planet, there's going to be a game with him and 
multiplayer. You can have fun with your friends. It seemed okay. Uh, they announced this really cool car destruction game called Destruction All-Stars. Uh, the music was great in this. The characters look like a lot of fun. They all have, like, unique personality and style. And, yeah, it's like a destru destruction derby car game. Kind of reminded me a little bit of, like, Twisted Metal or something. Like, everybody's in cars. Everybody's, like, destroying cars, shooting them up, destroying them, crashing into other cars. Looked insane, but also lots of fun. Uh, just going through everything. Uh, they showed off another horror game called Ghost Wire Tokyo, which is like a horror game set in the future, in like futuristic Tokyo. There's ghosts all over the city, and you have like special powers, and you have to like defeat the ghosts, and they're coming at you. It looks creepy, but also kind of cool. Uh, next, they showed off Godfall, a game that was teased for a very long time as a PS5 exclusive. Uh, it looks, it looks kind of fun. It's like a dungeon crawling, looting style game. You basically defeat waves of enemies by yourself or with your friends. You get better loot, head on to the next area, level up, stuff like that. Looks fun. They showed off Hitman 3, yes, the new Hitman game coming out to the PlayStation 5 in January. Uh, the trailer was insane, and apparently this is going to be, uh, his most dangerous assignment. So if you like Hitman 3, this is gonna be the game for you. It looked awesome, judging by the trailer. Uh, next they showed off NBA 2K21 running on the PlayStation 5. Looks pretty good, I'm sure ASMR collect and play will be getting that on PS5. He already told me he's interested, and he loves the NBA 2K series, so that's a game he'll be getting. Uh, next, they revealed Demon Souls Remake, or Remaster, is coming out for the PlayStation 5. This has been rumored for such a long time, and now it's official. Uh, Demon Souls was a game that came out on PS3. It was kind of a cult hit. And then it got very, very popular once Dark Souls came out, and everybody loves that game. But the graphics are pretty bad, it's very janky, it has a lot of issues, so now they're finally bringing it to PlayStation 5, and it looks really, really good. It's like a remake, everything's been redone. Insane, I'm sure that's going to be very, very popular. People love the Dark Souls games. Uh... Let's see what else there. There is a lot of games to the show. Uh, next, they showed off a new Resident Evil game, and it looks so scary, man. The last Resident Evil game was kind of scary, but this one, this one is different. This one feels like Resident Evil 4 meets, like, I want to say maybe Resident Evil 2, because it takes place in, like, a village. It's called Resident Evil village and they kind of like capitalize it so it looks like eight so resident evil eight but yeah there's like this huge castle i don't know why they called it village they should have just called it resident evil castle or something but uh wow i don't even know where to start just let's just say the trailer was creepy go watch it uh there's lots of monsters lots of creepy looking evil people uh, i have no idea what's going on but chris is in the game apparently and Leon is apparently in the game and there's been rumors about Resident Evil characters that are going to be making appearances in this one so if you're a Resident Evil fan go check out the trailer this one's going to be good uh, next they showed off this game called Pragmata which also looked insane it looked like a really cool futuristic game at first when I saw it I was like wait is this a Hideo Kojima game but no, it's some kind of futuristic game with, like, android robots and aliens and outer space. And I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> but it looked cool. So I'll definitely be checking out that, too. It's called Pragmata, and it's by Capcom. Capcom had a lot of good stuff to show. And lastly, they showed off a new game by the Horizon Zero Dawn developers called Horizon Forbidden West. And this, this looks awesome, by the way. So if you love the original Horizon game, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn on PlayStation 4 that won a lot of awards. People really, really like that game. 
Horizon Forbidden West continues the story, and there were some scenes in the trailer showing, like, underwater exploration, and my mind was, like, blown away. I was like, how in the world does it look that good? Like, there's no way, but it was, it was actually shown from the game, like, in-game footage, so, wow, fantastic, and honestly, that's most of the stuff. Uh, there was this other game called Deathloop that's coming to PS5 and also PC, by the way, but, uh, yeah, it's like a game where, kind of like the Returnal game, uh, this game, you die over and over and over again, and you try to make it out of this crazy island where all these people want you dead, and you have, like, tons of different weapons at your disposal, and you need to learn from your mistakes and keep on going, because you're in a death loop, and you don't want to die anymore, you want to come back and defeat your enemies, so it looks cool, just not as cool as that Returnal game, because that looked dark and scary but also really, really cool. Uh, I'm trying to remember uh, going through some other games in case I miss, but I, I went through most of like the really big and important stuff, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited for Resident Evil, uh, the new Resident Evil game. Resident Evil 8, uh, Demon Souls, of course, is going to be popular on PS5. People are going to love, love that remake. Um, Pragmata looks interesting. Ghostwire Tokyo looks scary. The Returnal game looks insane, but I really want to play it. Uh, and Square Enix's game, Project Athia, or Athia, I have no idea what that is about, but it looks nice. So, yeah, that's basically everything that was shown at the PlayStation 5 event. So, let me know in the comments if you're getting the PlayStation 5. What do you think of the system? Are you excited? And uh, let's head on to the last few pieces of news that are PS5 related. Um, Valorant, or Valorant, <laughs> a popular PC game, of course, is being currently prototyped for consoles, so apparently they're working on a PS4 and Xbox and even PlayStation 5 version of Valorant for the future, because Riot Games wants to bring Valorant to all consoles and all systems and this kind of contradicts a statement they made like two months ago where they were like oh we only are focusing on pc right now we don't we don't really care about consoles now they seem to change their mind so that's interesting so i guess everyone that really wants to play that you'll be able to play it on console probably in the future next we have some angry news uh, from call of duty fans call of duty modern warfare season four came out and fans are very, very angry because on Xbox, the new update is 84 gigabytes of space. Yeah, 84 gigabytes for an update. That's basically the size of a game. Like, come on, Activision, what, what are you guys doing? And on PlayStation 4, the update's like 32 gigabytes, which is still insanely huge. Like, seriously, what is going on? Why are the updates for Modern Warfare the size of a video game? Like... They need to learn how to compress files or something, like, for real. They're literally uploading, like, the raw textures and update files without compressing anything, it feels like. Uh, wow. It's insane. It's gonna be, like, the biggest video game of all time on PS4 and Xbox. I can feel it. Like, every few weeks they update it and the file just gets bigger and bigger. So, it actually trended on Twitter. People were so angry. And Activision kind of came out and was like... We're working on decreasing the file size in the future, don't worry. But yeah, people got really angry. Because, you know, not everyone has like a certain amount of space, so you don't have like 200 free terabytes of space on your <laughs> PS4. You know, most people have like 500 gigabyte, you know, <laughs> hard disk drives on there, so <laughs> when you have half of that taken up by like one game, it's just insane. And lastly, Persona 4 Golden is coming to the PC. This is mind-blowing. Persona 4 was one of the best RPGs on the PlayStation 2, a system that had many, many good RPGs, by the way. And it had a special version called Golden, Persona 4 Golden, that was brought to the P PlayStation Vita. And that was the last we heard of that version of the game. Like, no more ports, nothing. Now in 2020, Atlas decides to 
release Persona 4 Golden for PC, and it will be coming out on June 13th, so Persona fans, PC gamers, lots of people are very excited to get the chance to play this game again in better graphics on their PC, so fingers crossed for like a PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5 version too, because I would definitely comp this game again. Really, really good game. And, uh, yeah, basically, that's all the news for this week, so thank you all for listening, for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. So long, and...